how long have you guys been together? Uh, about six months. <laughs> We're friends. <laughs> friends, can but we, he wants to... Can we talk about this uh, not in front of everyone? Welcome to the friend zone. She sees you as a completely non-sexual entity. Like a lamp. I don't want to be a lamp. Why are we attracted to rejection? And what makes some people so delusional? I'm not attracted to you. I disagree. This is your body on the friend zone. You can't get your crush alone. They avoid your touch. They like to be your wingman. Have you met Ted? Or talk to you about their sex life. It's big. In agonizing detail. How? I if this sounds like you, chances are you're in the friend zone. The lonely land of unrequited love. It's only been four hours. Your heart may be hurting, but it's your head that's going haywire. Ah! Crushes are like crack. Oh. How do they get us high? What makes them so addictive? I texted you 10 times. Here's what the friend zone does to the brain. And it ain't friendly. So no Cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is the psychological discomfort experienced when a person simultaneously holds two or more incompatible thoughts or behaviors. Like knowing smoking is unhealthy, yeah. but doing it anyway. Members of the friend zone may experience cognitive dissonance if they believe their crush harbors an underlying attraction to them, but their actions indicate otherwise. It was a challenge being touched by him. You might think she's smiling at you because she's attracted, but she's just trying to be nice. Lots of people smile, fella. And if she invites you to a party or event, there's a reason why she's keeping her friends around. And you might be one of them. No touching! It can be agonizing to cope with the mental split. To close it, people tend to obsessively analyze their crush's behavior for signs that they reciprocate their feelings. What the fuck are you looking at? Accepting that they don't would remove the dissonance, but this would mean losing your fix. Corny. Please stop analyzing your text messages. You're clearly addicted. Dopamine. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter produced in your brain that influences your decision making. Anytime something pleasurable happens, your dopamine levels surge, like seeing your crush, or that thumbs up on your Insta photo. That's what makes you feel all giddy. But these butterflies in your stomach can be dangerously addictive. Smokers, shopaholics, and the friend zone are all chasing a dopamine high. The more uncertainty in your relationship, the more dopamine you produce. It's why people love the chase or courting so much. It's my nipple. And why some people simp so hard. Make it so hard. Limerence. Limerence isn't whimsical Irish poetry, bop, bop. but rather a state of obsessive infatuation. Someone with limerence is so obsessed with their crush that they can't focus on anything else. Food, work, and sleep all become insignificant. I like watching you sleep. Their happiness grows more and more dependent on their crush, and it can become dangerous. But it's not intimacy that you crave. Sex. It's the reciprocation of your feelings. You're addicted to the attention you get, romantic or otherwise. You can experience platonic limerence toward a friend, colleague, or even a stranger. I wish I could wear your skin. Limerence destroyed the career of one man who developed a nine-year obsession with his coworker. His distraction led to poor performance at work and eventual firing. Don't be that guy. I am a pervert. The friend zone is in your control. Stop being a <laughs> and try having some open communication with your crush about your feelings. I love you. No. And remember, you are not entitled to a relationship with this person, no matter how much of a nice guy you are. Thanks for wasting my time. Know when to move on. If the chemistry isn't right, don't try to force it. Friendships can be as beautiful and rewarding as any romance, and a lot less sticky. Speaking of which, what is the kissing disease? Pucker up and find out on another episode of Your Body On.